Knowledge is power. And this is Powerful Stuff. Wellness Education Cannabis Advocates of Nevada present the Weekend 702 Nevada Cannabis News Hour with the Weekend Radio Team. For the next 60 minutes, we'll take an in-depth look at the cannabis reform revolution sweeping the nation. Now, let's fire up the News Hour. Here is the Weekend Radio Team. Hello, hello. Welcome to the Nevada Cannabis News Hour. It's Tuesday, February 16th. In the studios here at VANR, V-A-N-R Vegas All Net Radio, we have Lawrence on the boards, me, Kurt, we got William Beach Baker, and of course Perry Haichu here. So, thank you. So, good to be here. <laughs> yep. So, uh, news in Las Vegas. So let's see. We had the uh, we had the uh, advocate workshop last Thursday. Mm-hmm. That was big news. That was a great turnout. We had a uh, over. I did a head count over sixty-seven. Not as not as much as last time. Last time we had like eighty, but uh, I guess a lot of few people were under the weather, and there was a nurses' meeting, so we lost a few of our advocates to that. Also, <laughs> um, a very successful meeting. It really was. Uh, a what lot was of. The, what was the theme? I well, think it was kumbaya or something like that. <laughs> Well, the the theme on this one was educating people on how to be become their own best advocate, and uh, also to unite the community. And it really seems like these meetings are uniting the community. Uh, a lot of people were on completely different pages at the beginning of these meetings, and now they're all kind of coming to the same conclusion that we need to work together and we need to have the same message. So it's uh it's it's starting to shape up. We're getting some great people from the community coming in. Uh, and I think we're going to be very successful this next legislative session, you know, with all the tools we have at hand. Mm. That's so. good. Yeah, there seems to be a pretty good consensus on uh, quite a number of issues, you know, like growing your own and keeping those rights and patient uh, access and, and things like that. So um, um, it's nice to see people put aside some of their differences, you know. And because the truth is, like we've always said, there's room for everyone. I forgot who said once, don't look for what you don't agree upon. Look for what you do agree upon and build on, yeah, build on that. You know, don't, the the don't common denominators, <clears throat> and there's a lot of them. Um, and, and we try to reflect that. Uh, we can try to reflect that. Even on our board, our radio team, and everything else, we have Republicans, Democrats, Libertarians, right wing, left wing, middle wing. But we all agree on certain issues and uh, cannabis and hemp and patient advocacy and uh, responsible, good government. All those things are very important to all of, of us. So we're like... Uh, I guess Judge Scalia and, and uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, you know, the two total opposites or whatever, and they find the common denominator, mm-hmm. right? I think that's actually pretty good. You know? Yeah, this, uh, this, yeah, the, we have a, quite a diverse crowd, and especially coming to these meetings. I mean, right. we only had one guy at this meeting. He was at the last meeting who really wasn't on the same page as everyone, and he got up right at the beginning of the meeting and started spouting off on how we need to sue people, and we need to sue people in California, uh-huh. and and uh, Jen Jen was up at the podium at the time, and she said, well, that sounds like a great idea. Anybody here want to help him with this? And nobody raised their hand, and the guy just kind of got up and left, because that's, that's not the message that we're trying to put out there. I mean, suing people has its place, uh, but... That's not how you get laws changed. You don't change laws by suing people. You change. You don't change the laws in the courts. You change the laws at legislature, and that's who we're working with and trying to get this done here. So, yeah. Know. Sometimes our California brothers don't understand. We love our California brothers. Uh, they sort of think of Vegas as as their little part of their suburban L.A. or something they can hide out in. But uh, in Nevada, it's slightly different, and around the country, it's slightly different. Nobody's quite like California's marijuana. A program <laughs> no because it's uh, we call it the helter skelter of uh, programs because it's every county every municipality every city they can pretty much do whatever they want although they have led the fight and they have opened the doors for all of us and we are grateful to you California people we love you and we appreciate your business okay but Nevada we're building a statewide model just like the rest of the country and eventually it's going to be a model we hope for the nation that works for all the states and works for the nation and um, reciprocity started in Nevada so we're the we're the top dog there that's a battle uh, born and we uh, (laughs) welcome our California people with license come on to Nevada it must be working because 60% of the businesses the dispensaries report is out-of-state business 
So um, something's go, not, something's happening. I did there. not predict that. Yeah, and that's oh, and, and most people don't 60%. even know about it yet. So wait till they really figure it all out. All the big Super Bowls and all the things that are coming in the future, and if the NFL comes here and all the things, uh, this is an incredible place and an incredible time to be alive. And uh, we're on the internet because we're reaching out to all the world in all America. Uh, that if you have a medical marijuana card, you're in Michigan and watching this show right now, uh, and you're coming on vacation, we want you to come to Vegas. Don't listen to the president. Come to Vegas. <laughs> okay. And we That's love right. the president, but. Come to Vegas, okay? Absolutely. Okay, so um, that's my little speech. Yeah. And when you do come here, you know you are a patient here, and that's right. You know, yeah, that's the you know that's a, I have a little pride in that too. The right. fact that we started that here in Las Vegas, and that was a a big drive. You know, we can pushed on that at the beginning, and now the fact is that other states are jumping on board. It yeah. just seems like a no brainer. You know, it's, it's an it's easy. A <laughs> it's an easy way to not ham up police resources on something that people have obviously jumped through hoops for um it seems like an obvious revenue stream it seems yeah. well that, know, to ease travel anxiety between patients well, and that, know, that a lot I, going on i don't there. know why they didn't do it right from the get-go in every state because yeah. I, don't I don't i don't know i don't know about other that. states but i know through our process i heard it time and time again from the from the people writing mm -hmm. the laws if this is truly medicine then we need to treat it like medicine right. well if it's truly medicine then somebody who has a you know a recommendation in another state <clears throat> should be able to use it in this state right. you know i mean i've heard <laughs> right. that rhode island has it and i think hawaii is going to have it at a future date like mm -hmm. it phases in in a few couple of years or something like yeah. that but well um coming from a political background if there's any legislators out there i'd like to give you a little advice you folks need to settle this issue okay oh, absolutely. the courts uh, just like in our news here in vegas they these things are constitutional and we've got some news on it's, that it is but, disappointing um, how slow it's going with the legislatures states. need to take care of this otherwise the people will in referendums, when we vote this stuff in, it, that becomes the law, and that's the way it is. So you either, you know, get on our side, or we're going to get on your side. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Well, we'll see, we'll see but, where it uh, goes. And in uh, other local news, uh, let's see, we got... Well, can I jump back to your little, uh, yeah. the meeting you were talking about? Yeah. What happens now? The issues were discussed, people are starting to get on the same page. Where does this go now? When's the next... The next powwow. What, what? Where do we? You know. Our, well, our next our our next meeting will probably be in April, and that'll be after the Nevada Marijuana Council meets again, mm -hmm. and the Lab Committee meets again. So we'll have a little more information. Um, Nellis should be up and running right now. The Nellis Registry. They haven't put anything up for the seventy. It's I believe it's a 79th session right. this time. It, mm -hmm. There's none of the bills are up on that, yeah. but we showed you know we gave people a sheet on how to do that. But we're gonna actually start to form groups of people who've been coming to this meeting, people that are real passionate about one topic or another, we're gonna have them heading up sub subgroups and working on those laws and then we'll present them to the council and up in legislature next year when we go up there. Okay. So uh but the biggest thing is is we want everyone to have the same message. Uh what we got from a lot of the people up in Carson City last uh last session was, you know, we one day we'd get barraged with we don't want this from the patients and then the next day it would be yes we do want this from the patients so they didn't know what to do i mean because as i say not only as we can are we educating patients we're educating the lawmakers sure these people mm. don't know anything about this they don't yeah. know how to write these laws this is this is a whole new world for them a lot of them are still afraid of the federal thing some of them still have their own personal issues that and, and agendas that they're pushing you know they're they're against it and they're you know regardless of what the law says they don't want it to happen so they're doing everything they can to stop it right. um and then there's the ones that are on our side the good ones right um we're losing we're losing somebody up uh on the assembly this year michelle fiore she is not running this year she's running for congress instead hmm. so you know uh we have another candidate coming in who we're going to be having at our meetings and he is a pro cannabis candidate who we're hoping that gets voted in there in michelle's place because she was a huge part of helping us get this through last time without no her doubt. vote it wouldn't have happened so yeah. thank you michelle it's and, crazy you know, there were so many people you know what i mean who had to make it mm -hmm. who mm -hmm. and I had that deciding vote i mean it was mm -hmm. beyond close mm -hmm. just i yeah i don't really want to get into it too deep <laughs> but that one 
the I think the Peggy Pierce lady who was really sick and had to come in and oh yeah and cast mm-hmm. her yeah. vote and yeah. like so voted, many, voted on her deathbed. Like so and many people had sides. to come in, like it all had to come together just so. And I don't yeah. know why you know why the universe came together for us that day, but we were we were blessed yeah. to have it mm-hmm. have it go forward. Um, um, well, you know, politics makes strange bedfellows. We've <laughs> we've uh, made a lot of friends with the Republicans and the Democrats, and sometimes they. They switch sides on us. Mm -hmm. So it's just, it is kind of interesting. The only ones that have really been true blue to us from day one have been the libertarians, but, uh, and we love them. Poll numbers uh, are a tricky thing. As as a party, I would say the libertarians have been more vocal and on our side, but true blue when it comes to the state of Nevada, I mean, we got. Tick Sager Bloom, he's yeah. he's on our side 100% all right. the way till 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 this is done and over with. Yeah, you know we had Michelle, right. you know, and we had a uh, lieutenant governor, mm-hmm. um, a Republican, and uh, he, they were him and Tick. They were the sponsors of the bill, and uh, the governor signed our bill. And a lot of surprises there. Yes, uh, except that we did have some inside knowledge on that for a couple years actually, and uh, and we stayed with our hopes and prayers, and it all worked and came out. Mm-hmm. So, and now so look, we thank all of you. Now, look, we have legal state dispensaries. We have patients getting access to safe, tested medicine. Um, we got another one that's uh, opening opening tomorrow, Essence Vegas. Uh, they have three locations, and they just signed on as a sponsor of Weekend. So shout out to Essence. Yes. Tomorrow they're doing their grand opening on their West Tropicana store, which is 5765 West Tropicana. And if you go to Essence vegas.com you can pre-register and you'll receive 25 percent off your entire order tomorrow night and let them know you heard about that from we can yeah so well, uh, some, is there a time on that? how long is it going? it goes from four o'clock tomorrow night till 10 p.m oh okay. well that's pretty good uh, long time to get in there that's a good little happy After hour. work on your way home you're gonna unwind anyways right folks Mm-hmm. And, I gotta, stop by. and these grand openings, I, I went to one, they're pretty incredible. Yeah, they have some great pretty deals, incredible. lots of good people. Yeah. So. yeah. I got a story that kind of ties into that. You were referencing patients finally being able to have the safe lab-tested medicine and things like that. Well, there's a story that was in the Review Journal the other day about uh, these medical marijuana dispensaries are finally starting to do home deliveries. Mm. Uh, it says here, some brick-and-mortar marijuana dispensaries have become delivery services to homes, but unfortunately not to hotels and not to tourists. As long as medical marijuana patient card holders have valid Nevada addresses, some physical location dispensaries are driving cannabis to these patients suffering from cancer migraines and, of course, these other health concerns that people get their cards for. Mm. I think a lot more of these shops are planning to deliver. Some of them have, you know, minimum orders. Like some of them, you have to have a minimum fifty dollar order, hundred dollar order. Yeah. It depends on the shop. Of course, you can just talk mm-hmm. to the talk to the receptionist, and they'll they'll take care of you. Mm-hmm. But uh, let's see. I think there's like ten or twelve open. Well, mm-hmm. including the new Essence West and the Sahara Wellness, I think there's twelve now, mm-hmm. there are ten or twelve. It, it's just they're they're opening more rather quickly, but it's nowhere near the number of illegitimate delivery services that are still operate or non-business right. licensed delivery services that are still operating in the valley i think according to the uh to the article here there's still more than 80 that are mm-hmm. still openly advertising on weed maps mm-hmm. so they're going to still have to uh unfortunately deal with that and kind of try to s- i've heard rumors that weed maps is going to shut them yeah. to shut those guys out eventually but you know that's just a rumor we'll see as the months go by yeah, yeah, they've, if they they've, decide to take action they, there's been suggestions uh, uh, that they need to clamp down on the weed maps advertising mm. and any advertising of these illegal businesses yeah. um, I don't I don't believe we should add any new laws I think we should just enforce the laws that we have in place right now exactly. and you know because we you know there's enough criminal we've criminalized enough people for this for this plant that we don't need to enact new laws to you know criminalize more people the the delivery services that have been operating you kind of take your own chance with them mm-hmm. you know what I mean and most people know that sure. it's, it's it's hit or miss on what you're gonna get and I, I've heard it from hundreds of patients in the community and and also you know when they're even going to get there you yeah. know you place an order and six hours later you're still waiting for them you've called them 10 times and they keep saying they're on their way 
that doesn't happen with the state licensed ones. Right. You know, so. But still, the state licensed ones are kind of hamstrung because they can't deliver to the damn hotels. Yeah. So right. So if you're talking about, oh, you know, 60% yeah. of the business, you said 60% of the business from a lot of these dispensaries supposedly is coming from right. out of state clients or patients. If that's true, then supposedly their business could increase multiple times over if they were just allowed to serve the patient as let's yeah. say like i don't think there's any rules against an outside delivery service coming in like if you wanted a domino's pizza and you just had to have a domino's pizza even though they have in room Stuff crust. well they have in room um what do they call that uh in room service, room service. Yeah, yeah i'm sorry about that room service uh I don't think they force you to do it. I believe that no. a lot of hotels still allow you to bring that stuff in. I think it's just well, because it's this product right. that they're like, we don't want you around right. here because of this. There's cash yeah. exchange well, or, or no, whatever it, it is. It's, it's, actually, it's actually written in the law right. that uh, they can only deliver to a Nevada patient at the address on their car. Right. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Actually, so you use it. Set up. Oh, yeah, man, I don't I think know. you can use an outside delivery service, but there there right. is there is a, a place called uh, 420 Tours in town now that will pick up out of state tourists and they pick you up in like an Escalade and uh, it's it's pretty pimped out on the inside. Yeah, really nice. that's badass. But how much does that cost? You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, but this is a tourist town, and the truth mm -hmm. is, is this is called medical tourism. Mm -hmm. One of the, our favorite uh, people that helped start all this, uh, uh, councilwoman. Uh, uh, she, she talked about medical tourism all the time, mm -hmm. and so uh, and that's what this is about. So we're always going to have a two tier kind of thing, mm -hmm. well, and, and eventually well, the casinos and everybody will get in on this. But uh, well, do you think that's something we might be able know. to look at clarifying eventually in legislature? Like it seems like such a no brainer since we already have reciprocity in place. Yeah, and I don't know if we would get friction from the hotel companies trying to you know like step on their toes or would we approach them directly? Like, like you know, how, how do you address that? Um, city councilman or I, city councilwoman who operates the strip, or I think I think that this is going to be an issue unless initial position one passes this fall. If if we pass adult use, I think that that'll be a real easy law to get changed. Sure, I mean, yeah, there's a lot of that. Because if everybody can use it, why do we have to limit where they can deliver it to? You know what I mean? That that doesn't make any that doesn't make any sense financial sense right. for the businesses or sense for the patients or whoever wants to use right. it. So I hate to put it so bluntly, but we still haven't resolved the issue of where people can legally smoke. Right. Well, the, I mean, out of public view. We're kind of jumping ahead because the truth of the matter is uh, some of this is <sighs> pending on policy, rescheduling. No. Yeah. Well, hotels, a lot of the hotels yeah. don't allow it. I mean, but the law See, says out of so, public view. So say, say that this studio was okay with it. We're not in public view. Legally, we could smoke here. Uh, we don't because... We're business people, and yeah, we don't do that. It's We're not responsible the and, the studio, and we but, want to get through the show. But as long as you're out of public view, then you're okay. legal. You're legal to use. That's what yeah, the law says. Absolutely. So I mean, it, it, it can be it could be a business, it could be a house, it could you know just somewhere mm. where the public cannot see you. Is any is there a law stopping from someone from opening like a a Bluebird Cafe style thing? Like they had that, or, is, or do you see a potential business opportunity with that in the future, due to if the hotels are like, you know, we really don't want you guys smoking weed in our rooms or this or that, do you see an opportunity Lounges. for something like that to, to pop up? I mean, that would be that would be the ideal situation. For yeah, I here. do envision that. I mean, um, and I think they envision that, too. We're in, the, we're in like the first uh, dispensation of this, the first phase of this industry. And uh, they originally supposed to open 40 dispensaries just in this county mm -hmm. alone. No, well, we, we know we're not getting well, there. Because well, I just now. don't think yeah, that, but, I don't uh, think that uh, the I mean, commissioners want enough. people like walking and up and down the strip like to smoke and joints out in public no, that there's got to be yeah. somewhere for these people to go and you know and that the casinos don't want eventually. every single hotel hallway to smell like weed which is what no. will end up happening so there's got to be there's got to be something that can be done you know yeah. of course you can encourage people to use vaporizer pens but flowers will still be predominant i'm going to assume so. well i'm going to tell you something it, it's always about the money and the casinos it's about the money too and i believe i envision that they will have lounges and they will have accommodate their their customers because there's going to be millions of people. I guess it's coming all about whether it increases week. their you know, drop or not. Simple as that, and they'll and they'll take care of that. Put They're, some machines they in run there a pretty so good people business. can play. You know, you know that's that's their main goal. Yeah. So I mean, you know, the Cheech and Chong slot machines. Although they're all coming, folks. They're all but coming. for for your point on how much does it cost? The you know these people that are that are tourists that are here anyway, 
they're hiring cabs to take them places. A lot yeah. of them don't have cars. So this is just basically another version of a cab. Mm-hmm. But yeah, a and little a lot more. Of the shops a little are more for twenty dollars. A lot and of the you're shops are close to the strip um, anyway. So yeah, you're going to go up to the tourist desk. You're going to talk to the valet. You're going to bum out. They're going to have. There's a guy out front in a cab, and it's tricked out. He's ready to roll. Let's go. Well, like, you know, every hotel well, is going to have a bus or the airport. There's going to be. I'm telling you. Folks, well, now that I'm thinking the, about it, if you're staying at like the Stratosphere or the SLS or yeah. the Westgate, you can damn near walk to Las Vegas Relief and a couple other places now. Yeah, you can walk so. there easy. <laughs> yeah, that Las would be Vegas simple. Relief, Sahara Wellness. And I guess a if you, you want to hike a little right? bit, you know, you can walk from Circus Circus or whatever. Yeah. But still, like, there's a few. There's a few good. Size hotels that are within walking distance of some of these places. Yeah, mm-hmm. but uh, half of the tourists the Mandalay are from Bay, not so much, but <laughs> and half of them are in automobiles. Right? And, and so uh, they're okay, and they're cruising past these places, and they're in the suburbs now, folks. They're in my neighborhood. Uh-huh. Yeah. Right? So and uh, Essence, who's opening on West Trop tomorrow, they actually have three locations, and their their other two locations opening them. next month. One is actually on the Strip, Las Vegas Boulevard. Yeah, near uh, Sahara, right over by yeah. Sahara. Yeah. yeah so I dog. mean. So there's going to be plenty of it, plenty of them out there for for the tourists uh, yeah. that come that need their medicine. So yeah, you know, that's that's not a prob- problem. Um, also, another shout out, another new sponsor that just signed on with us, Sahara Wellness, over on 420 East Sahara. Sahara Wellness. So, yep. That's a, another good name. Yep, and they're yeah. they're open and running right now, and that uh, they're offering 10 percent off to first time patients over there right cool. now. So yeah. It's nice to see that part of the strip uh, coming back to life, you know, isn't it? Because, I mean, when the Sahara went down and now it's the SLS, which is very nice, and now they have the uh, uh, that, that big party uh, um, thing across the street there. Uh, yeah, the Rock and Rio Festival Rock and Rio. grounds that they yeah, redeveloped. Yeah, so I think uh, it's nice to see that part of it. I always like Bonanza going into Bonanza Souvenir Shop. But I'm, I'll be impressed, that. or I'll be a little more relieved when they really start grinding hard on the hmm. former Stardust Project, which is now the Resorts World, yeah. and the former Frontier, which is supposed to be like the AA lawn or something like that, hmm. but you know they haven't moved on that, but right. people keep saying, oh, you know, the strip's going to come alive. I'm like, well, when I start seeing the cranes going up again, yeah. you know, I'll, I'll be a little bit more excited. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that Frontier property has been pretty much a black hole since I lived here. You're I mean, it's uh, the, first, yeah. the first five or six years, they oh, were I constantly re- on strike, and yeah. then and now it's just been vacant. Oh yeah, I remember yeah. when uh, when it went down. They're like, we're going to build this great place, and then sh- cricket. Same thing yeah. with the Stardust. And yeah. well, well, and I, and well, I miss, well, uh, now we lost that. the Riviera yeah. right there too. I mean, that, yeah, that, that used that to be sucked. one of my favorite corners. Yeah. I mean, it was some of the best lights in town. You know, it was real easy to get around. Traveled to all the different different casinos in there, right. and you know, they had some good shows. And now it's. Gone. What we need is a good in, <laughs> in, implosion party. Vegas, we used to have these local yeah, implosion parties, right? <laughs> there's, yeah, I keep saying there's fun, only one way know? to do the Riviera. It's got to yeah. be an implosion on New Year's yeah. Eve at midnight. Like, really yeah. do it. Do yeah. it big, you know. But I don't I don't know if they're going to do something like that. I think my favorite was uh, the Hacienda going. That was, uh, yeah. that was a good one. They took it down level by level. It was pretty cool. And they did a whole thing with the wind where he fired off the canyon mm. cannons over at the Treasure Island. And yeah. Then, that's what supposedly blew up the hacienda, yeah, yeah. but yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and it amazes you because no city in America would allow people to just uh, congregate and okay, now we'll close you in and we'll close you off. You can't leave and you got to stay here and watch this thing. And I just think that's so incredible, you know. Fair You're enough. in your RV watching this thing go up. So let's see what else we had local news. Yeah. We had another grow house bust yeah. last week. Yeah. So the grow house bust. They say reflective of larger problem. Um, mm. I don't believe with that. Believe that headline. This this yeah. is not your typical grow house bust. This was basically criminals. These weren't patients. These are people that uh, uh, there was near Pecos Road and Hacienda Avenue last week Wednesday, and uh, they say the marijuana grown inside could be linked to an illegal delivery service commonly found online. They haven't released anything yet. Yeah. My guess is they probably already know the Ill- delivery service and they went after the supply and now they'll come after the delivery service because that's kind of the way law Absolutely. enforcement works so that's exactly what they're doing yeah but i guess a couple next door they say the last couple days they went out on their patio saying they smell a weird smell <laughs> so and they had no idea what it was and then a drug task force found more than 100 plants and a complex grow operation inside the house on maryland parkway come on, man. metro police say the drugs have a street value up to three hundred thousand dollars which means it's probably about a hundred thousand dollars yeah the equipment is valued at 15 to 20. that i believe because this equipment sure. is not yeah. cheap so 
Look, if you want to grow 100 plants, they have licenses available for that kind of thing. Yeah, and, and, you know, and you know you're breaking the law. I mean, come on now, fellas. Well, it's yeah. hard for me to get, like, if you pop a patient who's got 12, 15 plants, I'm just like, man, you know, that's not, that's ridiculous. Mm. But the guy has 100, 150 plants in a house. It's just like we have steps available for you and your partners who obviously have the money to invest if you're dropping 20, 30 grand on a grow room mm. to look at these legal avenues mm. to get into this, man. It's yeah. just like, yeah, I know it's going to cost more than that to get a cultivation facility, well, up, of course. These people, but, these know. people, I don't know if they had a whole lot of money because they didn't rent this house. They didn't own this house. <laughs> this was a bank-owned property. Squatters that they, oh that they were that they were squatting in yeah. and growing marijuana. In. Oh That's man! So I mean, I, they're, they're, I, there's so the first. Were they clue. stealing the power too? Yeah, it, it sure. doesn't say that, but I I'm, I'm but sure they will because Christ. most of the time, once a, a house water. goes bank-owned, the the power company comes yeah. and takes your meter. So. Right, right, and then they start wondering <laughs> why are you using. 20,000 gallons of water every month and doing this oh and electricity. God. Yeah, so so this is this is just another Man. case of some people breaking the law yeah. and what it actually ends up doing is it ends up hurting hurting our says patients and they're yeah. and I I can I know their claims are going to be oh we're patients or we're growing for patients and we only sell to patients but by what you're doing, you're actually hurting our system, and you're you're, yeah, you're 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 not benefiting the patients whatsoever when you get caught doing these things. You're actually making it harder on us. Right. So, right. You yeah. Know. Yeah. Everyone uh, that has tried to play both sides of the street, and we've had a lot of them. Uh, they've helped us. Well, and you know what? I, I, I they tell fall you what, by the wayside. You there know. was a uh, legitimate reason for these places to exist at one time, and really, yeah. it's just like... There is demand there, for this. There, yeah, there's a lot of demand, and yeah. you know, the prices still haven't fallen to match a lot of these pe right. things, and, th and this is going to continue to be a problem until the prices are uh, are able to match, and people don't want to hear it, but really, if I had my... If I, if I could wave a magic wand, um, I would allow everyone who wanted to to apply for a business license right. and start paying taxes tax them and you know Absolutely. start doing all this Regulate kind of stuff the crap out of them. and you know really it's just one of those things like y you want to make taxpayers out of these people then do it yeah you know don't cherry pick a few winners just allow the free market yeah. to dictate who does it right and who doesn't you'll have these people who take the time to spend all this money that want to have a brick and mortar shop or you'll have people who want to keep it small and do a local delivery service just mm. very similar to how you have in california and things like that right. now i know no one wants to hear we should do what california does and i'm not saying we should emulate them 100 percent. Right. but what i'm saying is that the more people you have paying taxes the better it is for the city Absolutely. not it's not you no, know, it's not what people want to hear. It's not what's best for you or me right. or this guy or the business owners or even the politicians. But for really, what's best for the city is to get everyone possible legal. Right, and, and, the, and know, that, that that's it. But you know, right. that's that's a pipe dream. It's not going to happen. Right. You know, it's not a county commission decision. It's a that would be a state thing, and that would be like rewriting the whole law. It would never happen. But no. uh, that would be my you know solution. Yeah. Of course, if I could go back and rewrite it all. Yeah, the little guy could be like a boutique single business person, and they could run their stuff through a lab and get it tested, and you know what yeah, you're getting. Yeah, as long as everyone's doing you it, know, legit, I, you know, pay your damn taxes. You could and have so many patients, and that would be enough for, for your crop or whatever. So I, I do and do encourage the legislature to consider increasing the amount of uh, what a caregiver can do, how many patients they can have, and uh, and things like that, and and co-ops and other things are good too. So, um, you know, it's all about the patient. We would never want to lose sight of that. So, um, you know, these are th that's pretty interesting observations there. We'll see. Yeah, yeah. We'll see where it goes. we will see. So, <laughs> so, uh, so, yeah, also we got some big news out of Nevada Pure, another one of our sponsors there out there on Boulder Highway. They were out at the High Times Cannabis Cups a couple weekends ago, and they uh, took first place for their Goji DC Shatter by Moxie. Really? Yeah. Oh, impressive! And, wow. and then they uh, placed third place in flower for their new flower Kooks, which I tried and it is phenomenal. So, yeah, I read a little bit about that, but I didn't impressive. try. Impressive! I didn't it, realize uh, they had won first place. So what happens now? Are they automatically uh, grandfathered into the next competition, or do they have to go defend uh, their title? Or I'm, when, I'm not. That work? I'm not sure. On, Amsterdam now, or I'm no, not wait, sure how it works. It's not in Amsterdam anymore. It's in Jamaica now. Yeah, right? but is yeah. this the first time the uh, Nevada has been officially recognized in this competition? Because now we're, we're in a whole uh, new industry here. I don't. Yeah, I'm not sure. I know they get. I know they yeah. get some trophies to to put on their shelves. So, That's uh, really cool. So, <laughs> so yeah. uh, I guess Nevada's on the map now. We're, 
you know, that's very interesting. I in had thought cup. of that beach. We're, we're are good. they are they the first high times? I, I'm wondering. Cup? I'm just wondering. Not and if they are, the place, um, sir. Mm-hmm. Kathy, congratulations. Yeah, no doubt. Congratulations to congratulations the whole team, you know, the whole cultivation yeah. and production extraction team. That's yeah. really impressive. Really? Yeah. And well, the, uh, all that. Yeah, they're, the, they're yeah. the only ones doing the moxie here in Nevada. So if you see, you, you look for moxie on the shelves, a lot of the dispensaries are carrying yeah, it. But it's all coming it. from hmm. Nevada Pure. I noticed that. I was over at the source and I had a, a half gram of it and I got the package and uh, it said Nevada Pure. And I was just like, that's kind of funny, you know. Yeah. It, it's just one of those things. Yeah. It's just the way this industry is working. Mm-hmm. They're fully integrated, so they yeah. get to they get to do that. Well, they're I think they're one of only two places right now that are making the shatters and the waxes. So mm-hmm. I mean, just about anywhere you get it from, you're probably mm-hmm. yeah, you know. And if it's Moxie, you know it came right. from Nevada sure. Pure. Or if it's a so. chocolate bar or a candy bar or something like that, it could have come from Nevada Pure, right. yeah. even though it's at a different dispensary. Yeah, I've I think seen I, that quite a bit. I think a majority of what we've been seeing is either from Nev- in the edibles has been Nevada Pure or Evergreen Organics yeah. is what I've seen. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah, and what's interesting is they have they grow it there, they produce it there, they ha- they make candy Package there, it there. They have a factory. It's just so incredible to see this all under one roof here in Las Vegas. Beautiful, beautiful Las Vegas. Yep. So it's about time for our break and we'll come back in a little bit more you're listening to the weekend 702 nevada cannabis news hour now here again the weekend radio team welcome back to nevada cannabis news so uh as you can see we have lots more great stuff out here from some of our good friends at champs that donated to us um if you're wondering what these things are these are all gifts that were donated to us from the fine people over at the champs glass shows um if you see stuff you like here you need to come to our events and our parties because everything that you see here all this stuff that was donated to us we either raffle off or sell out at our retail stuff to raise money for our nonprofit. so yeah. yep so a couple of things we got today or the last champs we got our 3D tapestry here. With wow. Very yeah. 60 and inch by 90 oh, yeah. inch tapestry. Yeah, yeah. tapestry. We can't <laughs> and, it, and it's Look. 3D. So we go through those like crazy. Yeah, it comes with a pair of 3D glasses. So they're yeah. pretty cool. And that, <laughs> that was donated by our friends over at Sunshine Joy. Yeah. So and then we got. Another vaporizer there from our friends over at Cloud Pens. I have a Cloud Pen. I'm happy with it. Yeah, Cloud Pen mm. seems to be a re- pretty reliable mo- model when yeah. it comes to vaporizers. So um, we got the new dry herb and flower or dry herb and oil vaporizer by the Da Vinci the, by Da Vinci Vaporizers. The accent up there. Da Vinci Vaporizers, that you know, they're local here. They're right out of Las Vegas. I so. was not aware of that. Yeah, mm. yeah. They seem to be very, I guess, coveted among mm. connoisseurs. A yeah, lot of people who kind too. of are in the know, I wouldn't know say that, that it, you got to <laughs> spend the money and get uh, and get a Da Vinci vape. You know, yeah, yeah. I, I uh, personally, I haven't, I haven't dropped the cash to grab myself one yet. Yeah. But you know, from that's kind of the word around the campfire. Yeah, that's nice. One, uh, they 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 donate to us on a regular basis. One of uh, one yes, of our members do. actually won the accent last time we had it. She loves it. Mm-hmm. Um, wonderful for dry herb and for oils and waxes. So, mm-hmm. um, got a new product today. The 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 T Rex over there, uh, the rosin press, the green rosin press. That was uh, donated by Tarek Rosin. Now it's a temperature controlled rosin press, and you. Uh, you, it heats up, and you apply the pressure yourself. You put your flour between two pieces of wax paper, and you turn on the heat, and you press down, and it makes fresh, live rosin. And you scrape that rosin off, and you use it for dabs. No butane, no no chemicals in it, just heat and pressure to, to extract yeah. it. Yeah, so yeah. good stuff. A little personal rosin press there. We got a dark side of the moon print there from uh, Get Down Art, another local uh, venue out here. Some great art. Uh, hope to have some of their stuff at First Friday. I keep inviting them out, but they haven't they haven't made it out to us yet. So um, we got I'll hold that one up. Beach the oh, yeah, the the vapium the by Summit. Summit. Yeah. yeah, that that was uh, oh, yeah. that was donated to us by vapium. Just myself. Yeah. Yep. Percentage. That's a, that's another dry herb yeah. vaporizer there. Yep. And then we got the the lunch box, which also has some foam in it, so you can store your glass. 
That thing is great. It's got <laughs> it's got references to every movie I can think of yeah, on there. And that was uh, Grateful Dead on there. Yep, that was uh, donated by our friends over at Stoner Days, and they also uh, donated the four little dab mats out in the front there right. that you see oh, there, yeah, the yeah. Dank of America mats and all that. So nice little collection. And what about our mats? favorite glass metal glass pipe? Oh yeah, the the uh, the uh, the you pipe. Skip over that. The you? pipe tech. Uh, the, from Pipe Tech, the the Prometheus yeah. pipe up there. That's a glass and metal. Not, uh, none of the smoke touches any metal. It all goes through glass. It's got a screen built into it, real easy to clean and take apart and clean also. So just a wonderful pipe. It kind of reminds me of the old proto pipes that they yeah. came so out what's with. The, so what's the point of it? To have the glass, the metal to protect the glass, but you're still less yeah, the durability yeah. of the metal? You drop right? it, you drop it, and the glass doesn't touch anywhere because it's all yeah. encased by the aluminum. Okay. So when you drop it, you're not going to shatter your piece. Right. But you get the quality of smoking out of glass compared right. to a metal. All right, pipe. that's clever. Plus mm -hmm. the ease like of cleaning. It. Yeah, the ease <laughs> of comes, cleaning. It comes with a really cool grinder yeah. over there. I noticed. And it looks oh no, cool. the, the grinders are separate. We got two two different grinders there donated to us. Yeah, one from uh, Prometheus, which has uh, been a big time donator of ours. Um, we're also looking into doing some branding. We might get some we can grinders from them. Very cool. And uh, then the other one, we got a three piece over there. The black one from SLX Grinders and SLX are wonderful grinders they're like non-stick nothing sticks to them so when you get that mm. sticky wicky in there it doesn't it doesn't gum it up as bad as some of the other grinders do so very so, good. But very good. Yeah, that's some of the great stuff we got from our friends at Champs. Make sure you guys check these people out, support them. These people support us, and they help us help patients. So yeah. if, if you're on the fence or something or you want to see any of these products, come on come on out to our events and visit us. We have them, we have them with us. And as I say, any of the smoking utensils, Come to our come to our potlucks and our parties. We raffle these things off all the time, so you could win that for a dollar. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. Magic. yeah, just a dollar. That's all we charge. We don't, we, you know, we, even our parties are reasonable, ten, fifteen dollars, and we keep everything as cheap or free as possible. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, and we only charge when we have to basically and we certainly give discounts to uh to contributing members and you can buy a membership and things like that and save some money too so um we come on out and we'd love to have you and uh, a dollar you can get in on the raffle and uh, just have a good old time Absolutely. always lots of great food speaking of keeping things cheap i have a unfortunate story out of california here about mm. the double standard that medical marijuana patients face on a daily basis and uh this claims that a state senator from Northern California has introduced a bill recently that would impose a 15% tax on retail sales of medical marijuana. Hmm. Medical hmm. marijuana, which is fine. But, you know, a lot of people have the, oh, you know, if it's medicine, it should be treated like medicine. Right. But if it's medicine, you shouldn't tax it because it's not, you weren't supposed to tax medicine. Yeah. But this medicine is different because it's marijuana medicine, so we should tax the hell out of that. Well, I wonder and how much you're going to siphon well, off for other things. They said it would be about $100 million is what they're estimating annually hmm. if they really got the got what they that they want yeah. out of it and uh let's see this gentleman wants to direct 30 percent of the revenues collected to the new state agency that will be charged with enforcing the new medical marijuana ri licensing regulations that the legislature approved last year okay i can understand they want to raise they want to raise money to implement the program okay. um let's see here they want 20 percent of the money to running state parks, 10% to a county substance abuse program, among other things. Uh, let's see, the Bureau of Medical Marijuana Regulation would be charged with distributing the funds as grants to help local governments with the cost of enforcing the regulations. But yeah. unfortunately, like other tax measures, the bill requires a two-thirds majority vote and the governor's signature. Right. So, yeah. you know, we'll see where this where this really goes. Right, and I can see municipalities trying to siphon this off, too. Well, and they're going to be applying for it for all kinds of goofy reasons. Um, you know, 15% tax is rather some hardy. of it sounds good you know obviously you need enforcement you need money back into the industry and back into the patients and so on and so forth but you know going to the parks paying for the parks what's that i mean can we smoke in the parks now apparently not that would be I nice mean, they yeah, don't I was, let I was, us even do that that's right? funny i was kind of thinking in california thing, i don't know marijuana money i mean is going to the state parks okay. are they going to loosen that uh, yeah. that regulation I, I, probably not i don't think you can i mean they don't even allow you to play football or frisbee on the beach i mean no. yeah. well, but, you know <laughs> Like, uh, people, I don't think people really are aware of how how many different jurisdictions you pass through by going through an era, like a regular state. Like, yeah. let's say I have a medical marijuana card in the state of Nevada, and I'm yeah. uh, take a trip to Red Rock Canyon or, or Lake Mead. Well, mm. as far as I'm aware, that's bureau land management or federal agency. So, mm. technically, 
I don't think my card would be valid there, or maybe even not on Mount Charleston because it's federal, even yeah. though it's technically within the city of Las Vegas. Like, do you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, it's a national forest, and yeah. and it's like you jump through all these different jurisdictions, and like when travelers are going around, even when you think you're safe within your own state, man, you, you got to be aware. Just like do mm. your homework. Yeah, yeah. that's uh, another thing. Uh, even if you have a medical marijuana card and you're in a federal park camping. You can still get a ticket, and yes, it's not can. a fun ticket. It's beyond a state ticket. It's a federal charge, right. and they will put you through the ringer, and you will be you'll be under probation and everything for a year to two years without a problem. We've had right. we've had a couple of members go through that, and regardless if it's in a state where it's a medical marijuana state, if you're in a federal park, you have to you're under federal laws, not under state laws at that point. Yeah. So that's you gotta, you gotta be really be careful because they'll come up behind you when you're sitting at that fire pit at night and you don't see them coming up cause mm. you're looking into the fire and it's dark and they're coming out of the dark right. and, uh, they come right up on you and next thing you know, you're facing a possession charge and right. tied up for a year and a half with legal stuff. Right. You know, so. uh, and it is interesting because I go, I'm a, Black Rock City Ranger. I'm a volunteer ranger for a, uh, a city called uh, Black Rock City, Nevada, which is a temporary eight-day city that uh, a, a group of people call, called Burning Man put together. And um, it's, it's on federal land. So um, there are some weird rules. Like uh, you can actually have it locked up in your car because it's your personal possessions and stuff. And you might get away with it in your car, but you're not going to get away with it even in your tent. If they smell it or they want to, whatever. So it's federal land, and so um, does that mean your that license, your state license, really isn't valid there. Although you're, you do have a right to have it in your own personal mm -hmm. luggage or whatever and locked away, but you're not supposed to be touching it, you know, on federal land. So once well, you I, get out of the car, that makes a big difference in the town. I, I had left, I had left my med medicine at uh, campground over at uh, Valley of Fire, but that's a state park, so mm -hmm. I got lucky. Yeah, um, I called them. As soon yeah. as I got home and realized I left it up in the in the group campsite, right. and uh, asked them to please go retrieve it so it didn't end up in the wrong hands. And right. when I got back up there an hour and a half later, uh, they had a few questions for me, but I walked out with a smile on my face and all my meds, and <laughs> and I, I educated them a little bit on the program there. And they had actually they had actually asked me. They said, "So, what what would happen if we called the police about this?" And I told them, I said, "Well, you'd be wasting my time, the police time, and your time because." Right. I'm not breaking any laws. This is right. a state park. I'm a state licensed medical marijuana patient. And yeah. I know I just left this when I was packing my car. Right. You know, I wasn't right. using it or anything like that. Right. You know, so I mean there's there's an old law being broke here, so right. they let me go. And yeah. I walked out of there with my backpack smelling dank because they opened everything up. When I got there the whole office stunk. It just I knew I knew they were already in my stuff because I could smell it. And uh <laughs> You know, they're like, we got a few questions for you. Come with me. And they yeah. took me in back and all my stuff's laying there out and open. And they're just like, what is this? And yeah. <laughs> I'm like, you don't know. <laughs> it's like, yeah. why, why are you asking questions? Like, why don't you ask the question you want to know the answer to? You obviously know what it is. <laughs> yeah. But our hats are off to the rangers of all uh, across the country because most of them are wonderful people and they're not out to give you tickets generally. And, and no. you know, but there are idiots and there's people and, that and just and deserve to get a ticket <laughs> and, it, and it also comes down to the the ranger too just like in yeah. just like in politics there's some there's some rangers out there that have their own personal agenda they, they do. don't believe in it and they're gonna they're gonna they'll they'll tie you up for yeah. for nothing some whereas other people like, will, other rangers will walk up on yeah. you and say put it out or just don't do it here you yeah. know what i mean you, you no get doubt. away with a warning you know yeah. so yeah all right very you're cool kind of leading cool. into that i got a story here about you know the death of uh Mr. Scalia, our Supreme Court Justice, and mm -hmm. apparently yeah. there's a couple of marijuana-related uh, and with uh, caucuses coming through. up and all these things and the presidential candidates and well, it's interesting well, uh, the spin on Scalia because uh, a lot of uh, libertarian friends are very constitutional and um, he was constitutional. Mm -hmm. So how does he come out on marijuana? What do you, what do you see there? <laughs> well, if you remember, uh, excuse me, Nebraska and. Oklahoma filed a lawsuit against Colorado when they passed their recreational law because, you know, they don't like the dope and the dopers and they don't want to deal with that border state nonsense and yeah. da, da, da. So, you know, they, they're doing what they can to shut it down through federal court. And um, they were just, I, I believe that the anti-marijuana lobby was hoping that Scalia 
would vote in their favor as he kind of, I don't want to say historically has, he's kind of flip-flopped a little bit, mm. but uh, here, let, let me read what he said. Uh, when asked in October, in, uh, during an October 2014 appearance in Denver about how the federal-state conflict on marijuana should be re- resolved, he said, uh, the Constitution contains something called the Supremacy Clause, implying that the state legalization lacks legal legitimacy. Declining to elaborate further, he added, doing so could, quote, force me to have to recuse myself if a marijuana case reached the court. Two months later, the court got such a case when two of Mar- uh, Colorado's neighboring states filed suit, alleging their borders were being overrun by legal marijuana that they didn't want. While Scalia generally favored states' rights to act in response to what he saw as federal overreach in areas like gun policy, environmental regulation, and gay rights, he appeared to have somewhat of a blind spot with regard to state marijuana laws. For example, in 2013, Scalia wrote the majority opinion for the court in ruling that the police may not lead drug-sniffing dogs around people's homes without a warrant. Doing so, Scalia reasoned, constituted a search of the home. Scalia also wrote a majority 2001 case that found that the government's use of a thermal imaging device to look into the home of an Oregon marijuana grower without a warrant constituted an illegal search. So, due to Scalia's death, right. you know, we're not exactly sure what's right. going to happen with that case now. Right. Are they going to postpone it? Will they go forward? Will they wait for the new nominee? Right. You know, the Republicans have already said, we're going to block anyone you put forward, no matter who it is, without Absolutely. even hearing who it is. Right. So, and I think that's you know, just plain stupid. Yeah, you got to wait to you see know. who the hell they put forward. Like, yeah. we're a Republican. The president's got his right ridiculous. to do what he's got to do. Yeah, and, yeah, he does have a right to go forward and at least nominate and someone. And if they, and they should want probably a roadblock, they can do that, too. They should probably go ahead and you know, but, if it's uh, reasonable. Let's see who the heck it is, because we don't know. I mean, we had John Roberts, and that's he certainly confused a lot of people, didn't he? Absolutely. I mean, on a number of issues, and uh, the president's confused us because we used to think he was going to be on our side automatic, right? I mean, come on, guys, we well, know, you know how politics. How, how quickly, how is, quickly you know? the tides change. Sometime. Yeah. You know, you never really know how about right. this. And, and we ended up here in Nevada 15 years ago making this a constitutional guarantee. And so uh, when we first started our battle weekend, this group here uh, we went to the legislature. The Republican caucus was on our side. Then, and then two years later, us, the yeah. Democrats were on our side mm-hmm. and the Republicans were against us. So, you know. Uh, well, I, I'm, I just we hope, don't know. I just hope we don't have what happened yeah. last session, where almost nothing got done because it was such a flip from Democrat to Republican, and then the Republicans were fighting amongst themselves, and almost nothing got accomplished yeah. last session. It was yeah. it was sickening. So I think yeah. we're in a much better position to. Yeah. to well, uh, actually, um, Kurt, I think you got a story about yeah. that's coming up that yeah. ties into that. We got a we got a story. It just happened. This was, uh, I believe, last week also. But judge rules Nevada's medical marijuana registration program is constitutional. So yeah. basically what happened is we had uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, Jacob Hafter, who's an attorney here in town. He put together a class action lawsuit, and it, it was started by one, one uh, person who suffered migraine headache since he was 15 years old. And they, uh, they went and they tried suing, suing the state. Uh, saying that the program was unconstitutional because that we didn't have dispensaries, state license dispensaries for these people when they originally applied for their card. And the fact right. they were collecting funds for 15 years right. without doing anything. Yeah. And that you were like having that, to yeah. wait for such a long time yeah. to get a license. So what, so what went down? I mean, what ended up being the, the well, violation? It, it, it's, it, the judge said basically it's constitutional and that the state isn't breaking any laws, that this is an optional program. Nobody's forcing right. you into to using medical cannabis. Right. Um, and it's an optional program and the to sign up for it is an option. You don't you don't have to do this. It's 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 a alternative treatment. So. so people knew what they were getting into when they voluntarily paid the money. Right. They mm-hmm. shouldn't be able to retroactively go back and collect it now that they didn't like the terms. Yeah. Well, well okay. too, also in the application, if you remember right. in your Nevada license, you sign a couple waivers. Mm-hmm. And that's sure. what those waivers are about. Yeah. Uh, it really that you won't, it divorces that you won't the state from the responsibility. Or, or surf. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> but and, and it's been, but eventually that will change. I'm sure our, we'll get all our constitutional rights, and uh, and Medicare and Medicaid will be paying the bill. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That 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 was that was right? one. Yeah. That's yeah, another that, one that's happening. Yeah. So. And in that packet, that that was one of the funniest things I found. I mean, first off, <clears throat> as a medical marijuana patient, I cannot be using my medicine and ride an amusement park ride. Right. And that's one of the things you have to sign for. And then the most ridiculous one, as a Nevada patient, I can't use my medication in Nevada and surf. 
<laughs> not allowed to surf on oh. your medicine. Well, that's that specifically in that paperwork. So I, I, no surfing yeah. here in Nevada. I wonder if water skiing is just as bad because uh, <laughs> I, I water skied almost every day of my life. <laughs> and I guess I would have really gotten into trouble because I always smoked a doofy. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, yeah, where, uh, but my question is, where the heck are you going to surf here in Nevada? Yeah, really, really. <laughs> I mean, Lake Tech, Mead? Go to <laughs> Lake Tahoe? I mean, yeah. I mean, sure. Not the okay. best surf. <laughs> Maybe a wake from a few boats. But. Yeah. <laughs> well, we probably should talk a little bit about the upcoming caucuses and uh, things like that. Um, because uh, uh, Nevada is going to be in the news. And uh, I guess they got a primary in uh, the Carolinas, uh, north or south, coming south. up also Saturday. But the, uh, the Democrats will be caucusing across the state of Nevada uh, this Saturday. And um, it, there's a little bit of conflict going on that with the religious community. I think you might have something on that. But um, the re I'll, I'll give you the information on the Republicans right now. They're going to be a week from today. And the Republicans are going to be meeting from 5 p.m. to basically 8.30 in the evening. Uh, the locations, you kind of have to go online to find out unless your precinct captain came by like mine did, which I was very surprised. An elderly uh, uh, lady, uh, Jay Clark, I want to thank you for coming by and introducing yourself. And I appreciate uh, you being involved. And um, But uh, the Republicans a week from the day, this Saturday, the Democrats meet, but they do have a growing issue with the caucus because uh, a lot of the Jewish community and the Seventh-day Adventist community, I guess that's their holy day, Saturday. That's right. According and uh, the caucus it. starts like at 11 a.m. And so uh, some of these people may not feel like participating in, in the uh, caucus. And I think caucuses are kind of stupid. You know, right. that's another story for another day. There's always an issue with that. There was always issues with right. who got to vote, who didn't. Because some people are at work, this, that, and the other. So, you know, it is what it is. And hopefully someday we'll be able to uh, to revert back to a true primary. Right. Mm -hmm. But if you can go to the caucus, Sarah, and you're a Democrat, yes. you can show up and you can register at that caucus. You can't do that at the Republican caucus. I think caucus you have to register, register by like last Friday or this yeah. Friday. Or something. If the you're Republican not registered had a deadline, but the, uh, the, the Democrats Republican. don't have a deadline. Yeah, the, ver the, the Democrats, you can do it at the caucus. At the caucus. That's so. the Bring your ID be. Should be. or verification, same, same whatever they require, and, oh. um, and, and, and participate in it, whichever it, one you want to participate. It, it, it kind of falls into the lines with the, the new voting rules that they passed. You know, it seems like the Republicans seem to make it a little more difficult. They don't want as many people to vote, yeah. it seems like. They're trying to make yeah. it in the, some of these states that, you know, difficult to vote, whereas the Democrats are... Yeah, I don't want to get yeah I don't want to get into what happened mm -hmm. last time around with uh, the Ron Paul supporters and how they were you know not allowed to vote and the delegates right. this and that and the other and then well the Democrats have their own issues with the super delegates with Hillary and things right. like that so you know we're we're all pretty guilty of uh, well last of time uh, Sheldon Adelson the democracy uh, he the he uh, Sheldon Adelson actually accommodated the Jewish Republicans when they had it on a Saturday and so the, uh, Shelley Berkeley I guess is, has offered Toro University uh, Saturday for the yeah, Jewish the, Democrats. So that's that they can do it after sundown or whatever. No. Yeah. Well, the, the <laughs> Democratic they, Party the Democrats came and it said, down. "Oh, well, yeah, we can't do that." And so it's just one of those things. Yeah. It's like uh, yeah, okay, we're we're, well. we're, uh, we're almost ready. But uh, time, we're so. with you, and we hope that you can all participate one way or the oh, other. Okay. Absolutely. Got some got S sponsors. To thank. Yep. Sponsors. Yep. We've mentioned all, but uh, except for Inyo, Inyo Fine Cannabis yeah, Dispensaries. Yeah, they're doing Las great. Vegas Relief. They got a great job. Las Vegas Relief for the thing. Um, our patients' first meeting on the second Tuesday of every month is being moved. We are moving from the Coffee Bean and Tea Leaf on Maryland Parkway to the Source, the Source, right next door mm. to the Source Dispensary on Rainbow and uh, on the Sahara. southeast corner, southeast corner of yep. Rainbow and Sahara. Yes, you yep. can't miss it. The entire shopping center. It's going to yep. be a. Gr I think it's going to be a good mutual move for the patients and. Yes. Uh, Yep. And for the organization, and you know, we're looking forward to serving as many people as possible and continuing. And big this class. discounts there, and yep. lots of fun and discounts uh, for the uh, meeting members. Yeah, yeah, don't check out uh, meetup.com. Our next big thing is our 420 party on mm -hmm. the 16th of April. Please yep. go and to our Facebook we'll, weekend we'll, 702. And we'll be out at Essence tomorrow night. Okay. Right. Thank you again. Oh. See you next week. And we'll see you on the radio. Yeah.